All right. Hello, everybody, and thanks for listening and watching the Italian American Entertainment Podcast. I'm Vince Shirelli, and today we have the great singer and entertainer, Graziana Maria Lazaro. And uh, Graziana has been performing for many years throughout the United States at all types of venues and Italian festivals. So welcome, Graziana. How are you? Very good. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming on. And uh, I had seen your name on uh, multiple Italian festivals for years, and then last year... We got to perform at the same festival together, so it was nice meeting you last year in uh, Ulster County. That was it. <laughs> New yes, York. it was a beautiful event. It was really great. It's, it was nice. That was our first time at that one, and uh, it was it's a beautiful area up there. I'd only been to the city, New York City, so when we flew into uh, New York and then took that hour and a half drive up, it was like a different world up there. It's beautiful up there. Yes, so, really beautiful, for sure. Yep. So to start this out, uh, I usually ask people since a lot of us are, you know, second, third, and beyond generations of Italian Americans, how you trace your ancestry, but you are a little different because you are actually born there. And uh, so why don't you tell everybody where you're actually from in Italy? Absolutely. Uh, Massafra Provincia di Taranto, uh, nella Puglia. And it's a little town on a mountaintop. And Masafra, believe it or not, is um, considered little Jerusalem because the architecture um, is so similar to Jerusalem, believe it or not. And it's, um, it's really, really beautiful, very, very historic. It dates back to like 901 um, AD. And it's, it's really amazing, um, the history. And they try to preserve that history and not necessarily construct over the um, structure of the town. So when you go there, it's all antique, um, very, very historic, and there's a lot of history for sure. That's cool. So it's Southern Italy still would be classified, right? It's, Absolutely. It's, it, I think I looked it up. So it's kind of like right where the, the heel is kind of, right? Of of the, the heel and the boot, yes. Interesting. Yeah, so I'm, I never went to that part of Italy. When I went, it was Sicily, where I'm from, and then Naples and Rome. That's the only... I need to go back. There's so much more to see, so... <laughs> <laughs> there is so much to see. Yeah. So, um, how was it immigrating? And actually, first, when did you come to America? At what age? And uh, how was it uh, immigrating and assimilating here in America? Absolutely. It was definitely an amazing um, experience for me. I was five years old in 1987. My parents actually decided to come earlier in 1986. And me and my sister stayed with my grandparents until they settled. And then we came in 1987. I was five, thrown into first grade, um, not knowing a word of English. And, you know, it's amazing, the school systems back then, we had ESL after school, so English as a second language. So it was double school because after school, I would have to go and, and learn English. Right. Um, and within, I have to say, I think within two to three years, I really started to pick up the language. And I think the younger you are, the more um, you have this, I guess. Yeah, you soak it up a little bit. You do, yeah, like yeah. a sponge, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, no, that's cool. It's it's amazing to think. Uh, uh, my mother was born in Sicily and came over when I believe she was nine or eleven, and she had to do the same thing. And uh, yeah. it's it's crazy to think my grandmother when she came in the in the fifties or forties, uh, they th I think she had to go backwards in in grades. They threw her. I don't think there was ESL back then, but they just said, well. Right you're nine years old, but we're going to throw you in with like the six or seven year olds. Um, so she had to kind of work backwards. So it's crazy to think, um, how it was. Um, but that's cool. So, uh, you don't even sound like you have an accent anymore. So I'm <laughs> at that young age, it probably, <laughs> it disappeared. Uh, it's my mom's disappeared too. So hers is gone, but my grandparents still have it. And I think I met your parents. They, they were at that festival, right? Yes, they came with me. You know, yeah. what's interesting is that they have an accent. But when I go and when I go back to Italy and I start speaking Italian, they can pick up my American accent. So mm -hmm. it's pretty interesting um, on how on how that is. And I try to practice Italian as much as I can, especially with my parents. Um, but it is kind of eye opening when you go there and then they start laughing because they can hear this like, you know, foreign oh, yeah. accent on their Italian, which... 
I don't think I hear it, but <laughs> yeah, it's the same with me. And I, I wasn't born there. So I, I, I only know from learning from my grandparents and my mom, um, but uh, they make fun of me too. My cousins over there, when I try to talk to them, <laughs> they, yeah. they can hear it. It's a little different, but uh, so where, uh, for those people listening, uh, where are you now? Where are you located now? So I'm actually in Brick, New Jersey. Um, it's the South Shore, um, or I should say the Jersey Shore, near Port Pleasant, Belmar. It's a beach town. Um, and it's very, very peaceful, very, very um, different than the city. I've lived in New York City for a bit, and um, it's definitely serene and peaceful um, compared to the city life. Yeah, I couldn't. Uh, I live <laughs> about an hour and a half on a good day with traffic from sh- downtown Chicago. And uh three days, maybe five. If we go on like a vacation into Chicago, that's enough for me. So I, I, New York's a different, (laughs) even more crazy to me. So for a lot of us, it's my wife and I, we can go three to five days in New York too. And then it's like, okay, we got to get out of here, (laughs) go back to the rural life. (laughs) But, uh, so when, uh, for those again, that uh, may have never heard of you, you were a singer and performer. So when did you start, uh, performing and singing? Oh, I actually owe it to my mom. Um, So in 1990, I was living in Brooklyn, Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, and there was this um, Lodzi Kino Doro USA, which is, it was like a little competition for kids that start from like three to five and then from six to 12. And then, you know, they had the 12 to 14 category. So she participated. She's like, you have to do this event, you know? Um, and she pushed me, you know, she pushed me. I wasn't necessarily like, I was a ham growing up. I, I love to make people laugh. I, I wanted to kind of, I guess, as, as any kid when they're growing up and they're coming into themselves, you know, at the center of attention. And, um, we, she, basically helped uh, with a song that's called La Lambata Napoletana. So it was the forbidden dance for this eight-year-old. Um, so she, pre- you know, here I am presenting the song La Lambata Napoletana. Um, and, you know, it, it was just a great experience for me, but I was very nervous as an eight-year-old <laughs> in stage yeah. fright, you know, always gets the best of you. Um, as I was coming into my voice, you know, I've always had this, I guess, stage, you know, fright of maybe, you know, the song not coming out or, you know, just something. Um, But I did overcome it over the years. And if it wasn't for that push that my mom really, really always encouraged me because we would sing every day at home as soon as like, you know, I would do my homework coming from school and then the radio would be on. Um, and me and my sister, we loved dancing and, you know, she played the piano for a little bit and, uh, it was always about music. That's cool. Yeah. So, um, what was your, what would you say was the first big show that when it started your music career? And I'm assuming you do something other than music. A lot of us do. Uh, yes. so yeah. when, when, uh, this semi-career or, <laughs> uh, <laughs> hobby that makes us some money sometimes, when did you actually start that? And what was your first actual big performance, uh, where it was like, a, or an Italian festival or one of those things? Yeah. So, I mean, I kind of started out at 14 with an Italian American wedding band and okay. I kind of studied all of the songs that way. Um, And then as I got older after, I would say like I was in high school, about 18, 19 is when I started to do kind of like a show that I was kind of, you know, wanting to bring the Italian American heritage and the culture and the traditions. Um, And so I guess I would have to say that, you know, I've done millions of weddings, you know, um, confirmations, communions, dinner dances. Um, But my best you know, when I thought like, you know, I, the, the way the stage was um, presented is the Westbury Music Fair and I opened up for Pat Cooper. Mm. And that was one of my performances where I felt because, you know, the lights, the stage, you know, it was just so professional. Um, and it really made me feel like, you know, I, I kind of, um, I can do this. I can do this for the rest of my life. And it made me feel like a star, you know, in some sort of, way. And I was 17, 18 at the time. Yeah, no, it's, 
I kind of got the same feeling when I was, I started very young, uh, performing and, you know, getting thrown on chairs to sing at Italian (laughs) weddings and all that. But it wasn't till, uh, actually the first time I played in front of a big crowd was in New York city. I went when I was uh, eight years old and, uh, if it was for a talent agency, I was in a Chicago talent agency and it was a competition out there and it was at the Hilton, um, right downtown fifth Avenue, somewhere, the big, Oh my God. Yes. Yeah. And it was a huge convention hall and I had gotten in by singing my demo of Sandy from Greece. And so all these years it was just me singing at backyard parties. And then all of a sudden it was like thousands of people in this convention hall. And so that was, that was the first memory I have of like, Oh wow, this is, it's a different feeling when people ask musicians, it's like, you know, playing at a, at a bar or restaurant or even a wedding sometimes it's, yeah, we love doing it. But when you step on, like you said, with the stage and like when it's lights and the lights go down and you can't see anybody out there, it's, it's, totally it's a, feel. yeah, it's a different feeling. So I got that young too, where it was like, okay, I really like this. But, uh, you were talking about how you used to get nervous. Do you still get nervous? I like ask, asking that question to I mean, musicians. I do, you know, especially if I, I always do in the beginning, right? It's mm-hmm. as long as the first song goes and there's, you know, everything kind of, goes well with the first song, then you're kind of smooth sailing for the rest of the show. Um, But yeah, I mean, I always get, um, my my hands are always cold. I mean, it could be a (laughs) hundred degrees outside, (laughs) but my hands are always cold because I'm so nervous. Um, So it's it's kind of interesting about, you know, the effects that it basically has. But I, I do always keep in mind that, you know, we're here to have fun. Um, not yeah. only are we here to um, connect with our audience, um, we're here to bring some joy and happiness. And of course, our um, traditions and, you know, roots, um, to, you know, to some people that are just nostalgic about it. Right. Yeah. So it's a little different with you because, um, well, you were young, though. So um, do you have many memories of actually still living there or? I do. I mean, I do? remember. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I remember. Um, my pre-K and kindergarten and the life there was very different where like you would go from eight to, I think it's like from eight to 11 and then you would come home and have your um, pranzo. Um, And then sometimes you would go back if you had to, you know, from, I would say from like two to four and then you would, you know, come back home. And so the structure of life there was very, very different than here. I've only been there once and uh, the whole bronzo go home for two hours or an hour thing. I was like, what the heck is this? This is so strange. It it's is. weird. It's very strange. But it, it, I was there for a month and it's, it, you know, after a while it's, it becomes normal, even if you're only there for a month. But uh, yeah. very different way of life over there. But maybe that's why sometimes they seem ha- happier and <laughs> you see all these uh, little old Italian couples out there. They probably live longer because they're happier, the different lifestyle out there. True. I yeah. mean, they, they, they actually, um, it's um, the reverse of like you live to work and then it's work right. to live. And, you know, they, they're they there where they live to work or the other way around. But in any event. <laughs> so it doesn't have to be an Italian-American uh, since especially you were born there, but uh, who is your biggest Italian-American or Italian musical in, in, uh, influence? Sorry. Oh, I have to say I have many, but um, it has to be Nina. Um, oh. She's one of my um, greatest mentors. I've, you know, listened with my mom. Um, Nina Pizzi also is really a big one for me. Um There's just so many. Connie Francis is also another Italian-American artist that I've come to know in the States. Um, You know, I didn't know of her um, or even Italy, for example, um, unless you are, you know, that lived here in America as an Italian-American artist, which is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's like the same thing. Dean Martin, um, American, you know, Italian but at the same time, representing the Italian American, um, you know, music, go to Italy and it wasn't as, you know, Claudio Villa or um, Sergio Bruni, you know, it's right. very, very different. Um, but they've made great impacts on, on all of our lives. I mean, they made it so much better. No, it's yeah. And uh, 
Nila Pizzi, I have some cool pictures of her with my grandfather. They they performed together, and uh, oh my he, gosh, his whole life up till the day he passed away, it was he would always talk about performing with Nila Pizzi and how cool it was and how nice she was. And so I had never really heard of her, um, and I'm sure a lot of Americans don't really know who Nila Pizzi is, but. Um, the queen, the, he used to say she's the queen of Italian music is what they used to call her. So yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I mean, my mom adores, you know, that era too, because it was like the fifties, the sixties and the seventies. It's just, I mean, music was just amazing. Even the lyrics on how they wrote and it was all about passion and yeah. you know, it's it, even the writing, the writing of these songs are just so amazing and passionate. Yeah, it's different as a, you know, as a songwriter myself, too. Not that I'm anything special, but, you know, <laughs> you, you look at like the music on the radio today and it might be catchy for a year or whatever, three months <laughs> with this TikTok stuff going on with these songs are big for a week or two and then exactly. you forget about them, which is great. They're making money at it and it gets big. But then you look back to, you know, the 50s, 60s, 70s, like you said, um, where there's the staying power of the song, though, That's where... True. The, it's not just a hit for a year and then you forget about it. It's, it's a, those types of songs, uh, every generation can enjoy the song. So that's, that's what's cool about that time period. You know, even it's odd. You look at like Italian musicians where there's the big ones, of course, Zucchero and, you know, people over here like them, but they're, yeah. yeah, but, uh, you go the opposite way around and it's like even my cousins and if you play that's amore in italy i mean they all <laughs> know that song and yeah. uh, you know the italian american songs kind of go that way where they also know those songs but the italian ones other than you know the big ones like volare and all that um it, it's just interesting to think about how even the italian americans like dean martin and all those guys they also influence backwards <laughs> back to the yeah. mother country because you you look Absolutely. back and even yeah so um uh oh god i always forget his name even though he's one of my favorites he uh, tufo fala americano and he did oh. all the I always forget his name. I don't know, but you know who I'm talking about. He. Uh, he arbore, no, arbore. I think Carosone. Caruso, there we go. Carosone. Yes. He d he did a lot of uh, covers of like the Italian American songs. He he would do them. So it's it's interesting how how that worked. But um, you've played all over. I'm sure you're like me. You've played probably all the coasts and all over the country at these Italian festivals. Do you have? I know it's hard to say, but do you have one or two favorite? festivals that kind of stick out to you? I do. Um, I have to say, so Warren, Ohio, uh, I did the Italian American Heritage Festival there in Warren, Ohio, when I was 14. Um, and so that has always been dear to me because they still hire me, um, you know, and I've been doing that festival for a really, really long time. So with the organizers, it's like a family. Um, and so that is really dear to me. Um, and, and along with, um, it's a tie between Milwaukee and St. Anthony's and Boston North End. Um, but the only, you know, Boston, however, gives me that sense of Italy because of the procession and the week long festivities that they have is really, I mean, something that you have to see in person. Yeah, that's, um, those the processions, you know, uh, I don't know if it's more of an East Coast thing. Um, I've played on the East Coast a couple times. I'm more Midwestern and West Coast mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I've played in Colorado and all that. I never see the processions other than when I look to like the East Coast, then I see the processions. And it's, uh, I don't think other th unless we were at a festival and, you know, we were at the hotel or not performing and we missed it. I've never been or performed at an Italian festival with the procession. And that's kind of, it's, it's interesting because especially Sicilians like us, you know, you look back to where I'm from, Aragona, Sicily, they still do the Easter processions and it's a big, big deal. And I don't know why more of the festivals don't do that because it is very authentic to the it Italian is. heritage. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I mean, I think that, um, you know, as generations change, you know, also the traditions change. Right. Um, but I do, I do feel that, you know, um, a lot of these festivals continue to bring as much old tradition as possible. And, you know, uh, 
hopefully, you know, when it gets passed down to other generations, that that also will come back. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, well, I hope so. And it's, you know, it's interesting to the, the different areas of this country and the festivals, how they're, and I'm sure you've seen it. There's different, even Italian American traditions that I don't see in the Chicago area. And I'm sure you don't see on the East coast with <laughs> all these different, I'll, I've never seen it other than in Denver, Colorado, we played out there and there was an Italian food vendor there that had like a Chinese walk, you know, how they cook in a walk. But it was giant, like the size of a table, and they were cooking this pasta with with seafood, and I'd never seen anything like that. It was the coolest thing, and it was just like they were scooping it in this giant walk. So you see all these things around the country with different Italian festivals. It is very cool. And uh, but uh, going back to your career as a singer, yes, outside of just festivals, of course. <laughs> uh, what do you love most of about your your career as a singer, at least so far? Yeah, I mean, look, I think um, singing the national anthem at Chase Stadium for the Mets in 2000 and then 2001 was kind of like, you know, the American dream coming to fruition for me because, you know, I came here when I was five. I was an immigrant with my parents, hardworking. Um, And so education was so important to me and also to my family. So me and my sister were the first college graduates, which was a very, very big deal for our family. And, you know, being at Chase Stadium, singing the national anthem, and I get very, very um, already emotional about it, but, you know, it just kind of gives you the best of both worlds. You know, I was born in Italy. I love Italy, you know, where I come from. And then here I am living the American dream. And so... To me, that is, you know, it makes you, um, it, it makes you self-satisfying um, that you have come a long way. You kind of look behind you with all the struggles that come with that journey. Um, and then you're able to do what you love and to be able to perform my Italian songs to people that here in America, of course, I mean, the U.S., are just so warm and they love, you know, to learn more about your, you know, like, what's it like, you know, how is Italy? And, you know, they ask all of these curious questions and um, it really, really um, gives you a self of, of self accomplishment is definitely a good word. And then a sense of peace because you found your purpose Uh, and you don't have to search anymore. (laughs) Yeah, no. And, you know, you're, you came, what's your, 85 or 87? Um, so my parents, 85, uh, 86. Oh, okay. I, 87. So 87, you know, my my mom came in the 70s, and I don't see, and maybe you see it a little different, especially on the East Coast. Uh, do you still see Italian immigrants coming over, or is it really tapered off? You know, I, I think it's tapered off. Yeah. Um, You know, and maybe that in some sort of way is a good thing because, you know, the reason why we left was, you know, with my parents was because of, you know, work opportunities. Right. Um, And so I think that it's a little bit different um, just generation wise. I think that there are more opportunities now in Europe Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of people that, you know, instead of coming to America, they kind of migrate in Europe. So they go to the north. They'll go to Germany. They'll go to London, right. um, Milano, uh, still in you know the northern part of Italy, Roma. Um, but it's really the southern part of Italy that I still feel is still struggling for work. Yeah, it's, yeah. A lot of my cousins in Sicily, um, they they have issues down there still. Um, it seems like always there's some big garbage companies on strike every time I hear talk to them it's just like it's it seems like there's all these issues down there um but a lot of my cousins like you said have gone Milan Belgium a lot of them end up going to like Belgium and so they kind of they still stay in Europe um which is you know it's great you know the the reason (laughs) at the immigrant story is to have a better life and if you can have a better life where you're born great it is uh, but um what's gonna end up being sad is um being the, this culture being brought out over even more. So, you know, we're still young, but 
you know, in 50 years, <laughs> 60 years when the immigration has stopped and, you know, it's up to our kids and hopefully, you know, our kids and grandkids enjoy <laughs> this stuff. I, so it's. And I think it's so important to instill our heritage and traditions and the roots of where we come from, you know, to our kids and next generation, because I think that even though there might be a little window of them not necessarily caring, I really honestly believe that later in life, as they get older, they will be like our audience, you know, who comes up to us, you know, being in their, let's say, 50s or 60s, or, you know, even in the age bracket of 30s and 40s that said, you know, I remember my mom or my grandmother playing this song, and you just brought me that memory. Right. Um, so I honestly feel that, you know, it's like a wheel, the life, you know, the cycle of life eventually will lead them there. Right. Right. Um, yeah. because I think, I think it, it definitely leaves you a stamp. Yeah, well, we've kind of already touched on this, but I like to ask this question to everyone I interview. But do you, uh, what do you hope for for the future of not just Italian Americans, but specifically Italian American entertainment? Um, and do you have a good feeling, or let's just keep it there? Do you have a good feeling uh, that, 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 that there's that there's others like us, especially in the music world? We'll stick to music right now. Um, yeah, no, the, I, I mean, I, I definitely uh, feel there is a good because of this pandemic. I feel that when we go out and able to perform, not only are the organizers that, you know, have made these events coming out stronger, mm -hmm. it'll be a domino effect. And I really hope that that will be because I think maybe when it, when something is always happens, you know, you take it for granted. And I think this year you have so much reflection that, you know what, it can be taken away and you kind of want to savor every moment, you know? And so I think that when we go back out there, when we can, um, we would give our all and more. And I think that that's across the board with all of the organizers, because really, if it isn't for these festival organizations and the team, the volunteers that go behind putting these festivals together and events, we really, you know, have to appreciate them and, you know, the team that they have behind. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I have an optimistic view that it will become stronger and better because this year in particular has definitely reflected on, you know, how easy it can be taken away. Yeah, if this didn't happen... I mean, it's unfortunate it happened, of course. No one wants this to be happening. But if this pandemic didn't happen, I wouldn't be doing the podcast or started this website. And, you know, it's you have more time, you think about it a little more, and then it's like, okay, let's do it now. This is the time. And uh, <laughs> because on the weekends, like now, I would, I would have been God knows where with the band. And you're busy, you work during the week, and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you're gone, and you get back. And so it's... There's always a light with, with these things. Um, Absolutely. And look, I commend you, you know, for starting this podcast because I think it's very, very important. I mean, I have been very, very lucky to meet, you know, fellow musicians like yourself that are amazing. And, you know, it's great to have that sense of, you know, one the thing in common that we all have is that we have a love for music. We have a love for the audience. We have a love to... Um, bring out joy. And that's what we do. And, you know, it, it's really, at the end of the day, it makes you miss it more. <laughs> you know, I miss going out and seeing my fellow other, um, you know, musicians that are going to be on stage. And, you know, and then of course, you know, the, you become a family, honestly, like, you know, a, the years as they progress. Um, that's what I've always, my takeaway is that you have so many people that are willing to, you know, help or um, give you suggestions or give you ideas and you bounce off each other, kind of like a, a network, right? Um, which I find that to be amazing, really. Yeah. And uh, I'm on to my next question. There's bigger, I mean, we, we play, I'm sure you play regular venues outside of just Italian festivals, but the big thing for Italian American uh, entertainers is the Italian festivals throughout the year. And, uh, are you worried at all 
about the Italian festivals and the organizations that are out there. Um, Because unfortunately, in my experience, since I started, I've been performing my whole life, but when I started the Italian thing, uh, it's been, what, geez, 12 years, 13 years, something, 15 years, I don't even know, that I started playing the festivals. And unfortunately, there's some that I used to perform at that aren't around anymore. And uh, I'm hoping that doesn't keep happening. Um, And I don't know if it's because it's following the trend of, you know, that 60, 70, 80 year olds are getting older and they're the ones that really appreciate, you know, when we're singing the old timey Italian stuff, like both you and I do, um, you know, the 20, 30 somethings. If it's not <laughs> Volare or something they, <laughs> they've heard, they don't they don't know what it is. So, are you worried at all that unfortunately some of that might be happening, or are you seeing um, a different trend? Well, I have to you know be honest with the reality. I have seen it diminish. Um, however, I do feel that it's very important to influence our youngsters. Um, to get involved. And I think that, you know, organizers that, you know, may have family, I've seen in the past where like, you know, a father has brought this tradition in this society, and then it's been passed down to, you know, his son or their daughter. Um, And so I really hope that it's still happening, because it really comes with these organizations that come together and, and supporting them, I, most of them are non-for-profit. Um, and so I think to the extent that we can keep them alive to support them and providing donations because they do live off of that. Um, and so I think that one hand washes the other. It helps them be evolved. And then, of course, you know, it comes down to the vendors and the sponsors. Um, so, you know, it, it's a it's a 50-50 um, I have to say, can go kind of both ways, yeah. which I hope I, I tend to I tend to hope that, you know, the traditions continue. Yeah, I I think there's I, I see it uh, continuing. I think um, I had a conversation with somebody. I, I don't remember uh, which guest it was, but Italian American culture has staying power. I don't think it's going anywhere, especially because you can pair our culture with the food so closely and Italian food's not going anywhere. So as long as there's Italian food. Yes. And and, you know, I think, and I also feel that, look, if it means that we may have to change our repertoire a little bit, right. Um, you know, and I'm not saying, you know, something outrageous, but you know, even if we have to keep it, but, you know, maybe modernize the beat a little bit to kind of, you know, Maybe, I, I mean, I, I remember with Corey Pestero, um, you know, we did Osarashino in like some sort of techno beat. You know, we were just kind of like fooling around with it. But, you know, it's kind of amazing what he could do with that, oh, yeah. <laughs> in that accordion. But, you know, what's what's interesting is that there's so many different ways that we can still continue to bring the tradition of these songs that have a history Right. Um, granted, I don't know how some people might feel with those Arashino and techno, <laughs> but, you know, you can still try. I mean, especially with outdoor festivals that to me, I think people go not only there to listen, I also feel like they want to dance. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, get their body moving. And I always feel that, you know, upbeat music, you can't beat it. I mean, La Tarantella, for yeah. example, <laughs> yeah, is, no. is one of those dances that, you know, I think you can leave it in the authentic form and people still have fun. Right. Yeah. We, I've discovered that over the years. And I, I believe you saw us play. It's hard when we're at the same festival, we're playing at the same time, we're on different stages. It's hard. But <laughs> uh, we, we started doing that three years ago where I said, you, we got a, and Mike Frank, my guitar player who you met, he does more mm-hmm. flamenco Latin. So our stuff is, we say flamenco Italiano. And that's kind of the way I I'm trying to change it where you know the spanish music's not going away either latin music so i mean and they're so similar um same beat basically for half the stuff so um that's kind of how i'm trying to modernize it a little bit and but some of it's hard you know um us being brought up with this music 
it's very hard to think of these songs in a different way sometimes because you're brought up, <laughs> you know, if uh, all the law or all those standards, it's just like, uh, how do you, how do you play it fast? I mean, you can't think of a way to play know, those things I mean, fast. Yeah. You know, it's funny because I was thinking about reggaeton that was, you know, a big, it's still big in Italy. And if you ever Google um, certain songs, Sicilian songs that they've made into reggaeton, that you would it blow it would blow your mind on you know yeah. how they've modernized, you know. And so even there, um, when you uh, especially in the summer, I mean, their Latino beats are to die for. And the thing is, is that most of them like they'll they'll turn a song like uh shooty shooty in reggaeton i mean like right. it's amazing <laughs> it is cool yeah i just started hearing um someone told me it was because of a netflix show and i think it was a latin netflix show um money, money heist maybe I think oh, that's yeah, the one. Yeah. So they played the song bella ciao yes uh, and yeah. now it's like all of a sudden bella ciao is a thing and they're doing it like techno kind of thing so it's yeah. cool it, just like tuvo fala americano a few years ago when they did it in that different beat and it was huge for a year Absolutely. or two yeah so i i can't think that way i i'm still, <laughs> it's hard for me i'm glad there's guys out there that can can arrange the songs a little differently but it is i mean look i'm i'm with you on keeping and preserving the authenticity um, but, you know, going back to kind of adapting to our change of audience, um, you know, I think it's like, you know, it's almost like us being there and a scientist, you know, you just right. give it a shot and you see what happens. That's right. Um, but it's all, it's all trial and error too. You know, we have to explore, we have to experiment and we got to see what works. Yep. I'll never forget. I was playing at, in San Diego and, mm -hmm. uh, we went to the festival, but we, when we try to, when we do this, since Frank and I can also do like a duo thing, we were like, let's, let's find other gigs. We're only playing for an hour. Well, we got 23 other hours. So we found <laughs> another show somewhere and it was at a college campus in San Diego. And I'll never forget we were playing and there was a lot of people and we're playing some of the stuff and we read the crowd. And I was just like, let's play uh, Maruzella, but let's do it a little yeah. different. Yeah. And uh, for three hours we played on the patio and some like two people came up and they're like, what was that song you were playing? Like with an M word. And I was like, Maruzella. They're like, yeah, that was the coolest song you play. I was just like out of all the songs, mm -hmm. even the ones that are American or whatever, it's yeah. just like they picked. So there's still people enjoy sometimes those old timey and whatever, even if you're not Absolutely. Italian. Yeah. And look, and I think as an Italian American entertainer, I think we have that duty, you know, to teach you know, also to, ex to, ha to expose this music to people that never heard it. Oh, yeah. Um, so I think that, you know, we also have a job to do. And as much as we want to adapt to how, you know, to how the world is, is working, I think that it's also, you know, we're kind of teachers along the way, too, as long and, and students, too, because we're learning as well. But I feel like, you know, there's some people that do appreciate, you know, songs that they've never heard Italian language, whether they're Neapolitan, Calabrese, Siciliano, but there's an interest. Mm -hmm. And as long as there's that interest and desire of people that are curious, because um, I find that even in, in the whole, you know, world, right? If, worldwide music i mean not only you know spanish music and then there's arabic music and it's international african music um but they all do one thing and they bring us together mm -hmm. yeah no it's uh it's an interesting thing and you know there's still today i'll perform and to, to me it's someone like me and you that have been performing forever it's like if somebody says oh did you know this was an or originally an italian song to us it's like yeah we know that but there's people <laughs> out there that still don't know it's now or never is o sole mio and you know all these songs all the san remo songs that you know were turned into english songs i mean people still don't realize that to us it's like yeah we know that but there's still a lot of people that then find it very interesting that it was a <laughs> italian song and then they just put english lyrics to it and it was a you know dusty springfield with uh, you don't have to say you love me people yes. we still play that in italian they're like that's not an italian song it's like yeah actually <laughs> that was italian I that when yeah. i do Oh, actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But uh, anyways, before we go, uh, what's next for you? 
Uh, I know it's hard right now. There's no <laughs> festivals, but do you have any upcoming dates? And if so, what are they? And then uh, do you have like any CDs or things like that for people uh, to buy or how do they find you? All that stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, what's next is I do have a private event, very intimate um, in October um, for 50th anniversary. Very, very important. Um, celebrating love for 50 years. Um, and so, you know, that is actually my second event of 2020. <laughs> my first event was March 1st. Um, and so October 3rd will be my second of 2020. But um, I mean, I honestly just anticipate 2021 with the hope of being, you know, picking up. Yeah. Um, I do, um, you know, and most people can, you know, look up my website, which is www.gracianamusic.com. Facebook, Graziana Maria Lazaro, um, Instagram, um, my Facebook page as well. Um, so, you know, I do have three CDs. Um, so Destino was one I created when I was 16, all originals and all Italian. Hmm. Um, and you can, you know, there's about eight original songs on that um, album. And then there's Dedicato a Voi in Arcobaleno. Dedicato a Voi was a more of an Italian, uh, strictly Italian authentic um, CD. And then, um, which had um, the Tarantella. It has, you know, Torna Surriendo Sole Mio, uh, Violino Zigano, Chitarra Romana where the Arco Baleno CD was kind of the infusion of the American and the Italian. And so on that CD, I have Frank Sinatra, I have Elvis, Mambo Italiano. Um, so I, I kind of tried to infuse, you know, also the American side. Um, we like to party, um, which was a big hit, I Will Survive. Um, so, and New York, New York. So I, I tried to, you know, also capture um, the English side of, of, um, the American songbook, I should say. Well, cool. Well, what I'll do is I'll tag you, of course, and on this, all your, all your links, website link, Facebook, all that. So people can find you and, uh, hopefully, uh, we Thank see each so other much. next year, actually on the road. I, so too. <laughs> I really, I really hope so too. It was a pleasure. I mean, honestly, you are really an authentic, amazing performer, you and your group. Well, thank you. Um, me and my parents, honestly, we were like, we just loved your style. Um, it really was. Um, I mean, it's interesting because you represent exactly what the um, Italian tradition of authenticity. And the kicker is, is that you weren't necessarily born in Italy, but you brought you, you it's almost someone that looks at your music. They would never think that. Well, thanks. That's, uh, you know, it's... No, I mean, like, it seems like you are un paisano, you know, <laughs> Renato in Italia. Like, you know, you were born in Italy, so yeah. it's, it's really great. Well, I appreciate it. And uh, once again, thank you for coming on. We'll have to do another talk. What I'm going to try to do is uh, have one of these podcasts where a bunch of us get on here, if I can figure that out. I'm not good at this okay. stuff. <laughs> That'd be kind of awesome. <laughs> that would. So, I mean, there's, again, there's this app called House Party, so maybe that'll work. Oh. Um, look into it. <laughs> yeah, apparently you can do five to six. Just thanks to my niece, because that's how I knew about it. It's I it's you could do five to six people, and it's oh. um, all at I'll once. I'll look it up. Yeah. But, uh, once again, everybody, <laughs> Graziana, and uh, check her out uh, on online. I'll have all the links tagged on this podcast. So once again, Graziana, thank you, and we'll talk soon. Thank you. Ciao. All right.